Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Today we are going to be reading for 24 hours. So I wanted to do this 24 hour reading challenge and I really liked the way that Allie and Allison Pages did it um, because she also has chronic illness. She has migraines too. I also have migraines um, and they are the worst. And if I stayed awake for 24 hours, I think I would literally die. Also, I have a little munchkin. She's over there. She's eight months old and she's teething. So why would I stay awake for 24 hours when I'm already awake? The modified version of this 24 hour reading challenge, which is what we will be doing, is where I will uh, time on my phone every time that I read until it totals 24 hours. I actually started filming this video like two weeks ago and then I just, I just hit the worst reading slump ever and I was like I can't I cannot time every time I read right now because I'm in a reading slump and if I do that I, it won't work it won't work so I didn't do that I just read when I wanted to I got out of my reading slump and I finished three books in like three days basically we're gonna try this again now that I'm more in my normal reading mood and I have a few books on the docket that I would like to get to. The first book that I would like to read, I'm currently reading, and I just barely started it, and it's The Collected Regrets of Clover by Mickey Brommer, and it is about a death doula, which, if you don't know what that is, so basically, a doula is somebody who helps um, a woman during birth, and just provides, like, moral support, sometimes it's like a spiritual thing, and it's just to like bring a calming atmosphere to the birth of their child. A death doula does the same thing but with someone dying, like helping someone be calm while they die, helping their family, that type of thing. So she is a death doula and so that will be interesting to read. I've heard it's really good and I've heard it's sad and I just finished reading The Brilliant Life of Eudora Honeyset and that one was about death and that one was really sad. But I really loved it, so I guess that's just the theme that we're at. Also, Penny joined me. Hey, don't touch that. Um, the other book I would like to read is The Keeper of Enchanted Rooms. Ooh, do I know who that's by either? I don't. It's in my bedroom and my husband is working right now, so I'm not going to go in there and, up and um, interrupt him. The last book that I'm hoping to get to is Electra by Jennifer Saint. This is a reread for me. I started it a while ago, but again, I had readings left. So. I'd like to finish it because I know that I like it. So <laughs> I'm gonna read and I will show you when I start reading and I'll update you after some time. And we will see how long it takes me to get to 24 hours. for 37 minutes while Penny took a little nap um, and I am uh, I think I'm enjoying the regrets of Clover so far I don't really know how I feel about her as a main character but it's definitely an interesting concept and there are like quotes that are standing out to me as like oh yeah that's interesting or I agree with that um, I am 103 pages in so I read about 100 pages in 37 minutes, which is pretty good. And it's, wait, how long is it? 400 something? 463 pages long. I'm going to take a break from reading now to play with Penny and probably get her some, well, we'll have lunch in a little bit. It's 1039. So yeah. We're probably just going to play for a while since she just woke up. Hi friends, it's the next day. Few things to update you on. I did read more last night and I forgot to update because I was sleepy. Sorry about that. I did finish The Collected Regrets of Clover by... Who's it by? Why can I never remember this? Her name is Mickey Brommer. I don't know why I keep forgetting that. The Collected Regrets of Clover by Mickey Brommer. I think I'm going to give this one a four, a high four. A solid four because I really enjoyed it but it wasn't perfect for me I think um, the main thing I didn't like was Clover's character herself was kind of annoying 
and I understood where she was coming from in a lot of ways, but I was also like, girl, relax. Um, but the conversations around death and regrets in people's lives was really, really interesting to me. I'm someone who doesn't really uh, struggle with the concept of death, at least like right now in my life. Um, just because of my religious beliefs, I, I just have faith in what I believe the afterlife is like, and I don't have doubt in that. So the concept of death isn't really like scary or unknown to me. I mean, there's still obviously a factor of unknown, but it's not something that I like actively fear. And so anyway, I just thought it was really interesting to read and hear about other people's perspectives and the concept of a death doula, which I know is like a fairly new thing. And what's so interesting is that death doulas were also mentioned in The Brilliant Life of Eudora Honeyset, which I just finished by Amy Lyon sure her name is um so yeah but as far as reading for 24 hours goes i'm clocking in right now at two hours and 33 minutes that was all yesterday i haven't read it all today and it's currently 1:30. um i had an appointment this morning it threw me off i didn't read anything i was nervous anyway so I think I'm gonna try and get some reading done this afternoon. My head hurts a little bit, but I think if I just drink a ton of water, hopefully that will go away. And it's probably allergies because I am just being attacked. I should have read more while Penny was asleep, but I didn't feel like it, so. I think I'm going to start this, Keeper of Enchanted Rooms by Charlie N. Holmberg. So this is about a writer who inherits a remote in estate and the house is alive. I don't really know, but it sounds interesting. And I like the color, like how cute it is. Um, I got this one from Harmony at Harm's Honey. I won a giveaway that she was doing, which was so exciting. I never win anything. so. I was really excited about it and this is the book that she got me so thank you Harmony I love you also I'm just now realizing that this is set in 1846 so it's historical how exciting okay so I'm gonna read this for a while and play with Penny or just watch her play and uh, yeah this is what we're doing I don't know what she's doing over there but I'm just gonna let her do her thing and we'll see how far I get into this. Hopefully I like it. I like how floppy it is. Look at the floppiness. Does anyone else prefer paperbacks? Because I mean, I enjoy the look of a hardcover on a shelf, but paperbacks are just easier to read from. Okay, I have to go help her get down because she's stuck. And I'll check in with you later. Bye. About a week since I updated you last. I have read for a grand total of 5 hours and 17 minutes. I finished Slaughterhouse 5 by Kurt Vonnegut and I am giving up. <laughs> this 
challenge is not for me at this time, I think. Um, things got really crazy and really busy, and I'll explain all of that at a later date, probably. I didn't read a ton, but I still finished two books, and I still read for five hours, so I think it's still a success, kind of. Um, but, yeah, definitely did not fulfill the 24-hour reading challenge. If you hear heavy breathing, it's my daughter trying to get to the camera. So let me tell you about Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This has been one of my most anticipated reads. I've heard that it's amazing, that it's a classic. Basically, you are following someone named Billy Pilgrim, and it is about his experiences in World War II and after, and he is a time traveler. And he bounces back and forth between timelines in his own life. And basically, it's a look at being anti-war and how PTSD affects soldiers. Um, this is based on Kurt Vonnegut's own experiences during World War II. Sorry, we had to move over a little bit because my daughter was trying to sabotage the video. It has very heavy themes. It is really, really horrific in some places. And what I have to say about this book, I, I'm not going to rate it um, on a five-star rating, and here's why. I didn't enjoy reading this book at all. I really didn't. It was really hard to read. However, I do not think that makes it a bad book. I can see how it's well written. I can see why it's a classic and I can see why the themes in it were important to <coughs> Vonnegut and are important to look back on today in our now post-World War II society and seeing how that war changed so many lives. I think that that is really important to examine and to consider and to learn about and to know the history of. So, for that reason, I can't say that it's a bad book because objectively, it's not. But I did not enjoy reading it because it is horrific. Also, um, just as a little like content warning, I guess, there is a lot of sexual content in this book um, that's just gross. <laughs> and... It's not super graphic necessarily, and it makes sense within context of what the book is about and um, soldiers' response to sexual things during war, but uh, yeah, did not like reading about it at all. So that was Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut, and I'm glad I read it, I think. So yeah, that's the video. My failure at reading for 24 hours. Maybe I'll try again in the future. Maybe I won't. Let me know if you enjoyed this video either way and if you've read either of these two books. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!